Hello guys, welcome to another project and feather video. In today's video, we're going to look at how much does it cost to live in Bangkok. We're going to answer the question, is Bangkok expensive? And we're going to give you our full, complete Bangkok cost of living breakdown from when we spent over one month working as digital nomads in Bangkok. So if you want to see the spreadsheet of our expenses and also some tips to save money, go to the blog post in the description below. And if you want even more cost of living breakdowns like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Whenever we travel to a new place, we're going to try to make a new cost of living video for digital nomads. So when a digital nomad thinks about Thailand, they always go to the same place, Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai is normally thought of the cheapest place to stay as an expat or digital nomad, so most people skip over Bangkok and they think it's too expensive. But we will show you that that's not true. We actually lived in both Chiang Mai and Bangkok, and we were really surprised at the differences in value that you can get in each city. We actually found a really awesome deal on a sweet apartment right outside the city, which we actually did a tour and I'm gonna to link to it above and below here. And so we decided to stay outside the city and that affected our budget. But in this video, we're gonna show you what both budgets would be, whether you stay on the inside of the city or a little bit in the suburbs. Okay, let's jump in. We broke up our budget into these categories. That is insurance, food, transportation, entertainment, rent, utilities, phone, and personal care and other now obviously our budget was for two people but we're going to give you an estimated price for what it would cost for one person as well so let's start with insurance because we think that's one of the principal thing that you have to think about it we don't travel or stay anywhere without having travel insurance because i've had my fair share of accidents over the years and Paying a little bit each month for insurance has saved me over $15,000 in medical expenses. So our insurance costs for a month in Bangkok were $80 for two people. So one person will be $40 and we use safety wing insurance and it's treated us really well. And if you'd like to sign up for their insurance, We'll put a link in the description below. Safety Wing was designed for digital nomads and it's really cool because you can just keep extending it month for month. You don't have to buy a set amount. You can just renew every month. And I actually started paying and it only paid one or two months when I got in my motorcycle accident and ended up having to have two different surgeries in Thailand and Cambodia. So I highly recommend everyone have insurance before they leave home. Okay, next up on the list is food. For us, we made breakfast every day at home and we had lunch and dinner and most of it local. Mm-hmm. Most of uh, it at a cheap, cheap local restaurants. And once per week, we will eat Western food. Yes, in Bangkok, Western food will definitely make your budget go up and we were trying to to stay down low so we only ate out western food maybe about once per week and for two people for one month we spent a grand total of four hundred dollars us dollars on food in addition to eat thai food almost every day we also have shakes almost every day <laughs> sometimes twice a day fruit shakes ice cream and twice a day Mangoes. Three times a day, mangoes. <laughs> the cool thing about Bangkok is they have delicious street food everywhere you look. And even if you live a little bit outside of the city like we did, you can just order it using different food ordering apps like Grab and Food Panda, and they'll bring it right to your house. Next up on the list is transportation. Now, transportation costs are really gonna vary depending on what your style of living is and where you're living. If you're in the middle of the city, you probably won't need to spend much on transportation because you're going to be close to everything. But we lived a little bit outside of the city, so whenever we wanted to go inside, we'd have to take a long taxi ride or a metro ride. And we spent around... $100 per month. $100 on transportation for two people, and that was 99% taxis. 
You can save a lot of money if you take the metro where you're going. They also have taxi boats that, um, that cost less than one dollar. But since I was in Bangkok for medical reasons, we always had to go back and forth to the hospital and we were always taking taxis to be more comfortable. So you need to take care with the taxis and always ask for turn on the taximeter is recommended. If not, you could get very expensive prices. So if you get in a taxi, make sure if they don't start the meter, just tell them to let you out. And also we found a very helpful application that's called Grab. Most of the cars we took, it was cars already signed on the app and you already have the price for any anywhere you go. So it's very uh -huh. helpful. So you know exactly how much you pay. Grab is like the Uber that they use in Thailand and you can get cars but you can also order motorcycles as well which are even cheaper but after my motorcycle accident which you can learn about in this video um, I decided to take a break from motorcycles for a while. Another thing I was surprised in Bangkok it was that tuk-tuk were more expensive than taxis. I don't know why. Tuk-tuks are really expensive in Bangkok probably your most expensive option even if you have the Grab application open and tell them how much it costs on a Grab, they'll still try to charge you more. So it's fun to do it one or two times just for the experience, but it's really not the most economical way to travel. All right, next up is entertainment. Now entertainment can include nightlife, going out dancing, going out for some drinks, or we also included different tours that we did. We did a food tour, which we also made a pretty cool video on a street food tour, which we'll link to, and a bunch of other tours in the city. Now, when we were staying in Bangkok, we actually didn't go out very often because I was recovering from surgery. So depending on how much you like to go out, you might have to budget a little bit more for entertainment and nightlife and those types of things. We ended up spending a total of $100 for two people $100 for two people. We went out dancing one night to a cheap place. And we did a couple tours and really that's about it. So We didn't very much. <laughs> so you your budget for entertainment might be a little bit higher. Okay, next up on the list is cost of the brand. Yes, the rent. Now the rent is way different than what you'll find in Chiang Mai, but I think you'll also find way better quality in Bangkok. So most of the places you will find out on the internet, it's condos. Condominiums, luxury condominiums. Which is a small, very, very tiny apartment with a small kitchen, one bathroom and one room. The cool thing about these luxury condos is that a lot of them have all your amenities. The place we stayed at had a gym overlooking the entire city, an infinity pool on like the 50th floor. They had uh, many different places to work if you're mm -hmm. working from your computer. Um, There's a sky room that you could work from. They had a 7-Eleven. If you want to see the complete video of the apartment, you have to click on here. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet place. But in Bangkok, that's the type of place you'll probably be looking at. We found our place on Airbnb and I'll put the link directly to the apartment we stayed at in the description below in case you like that one. So the prices depends on where you stay on the city. If you're staying in the most popular places like Sukhumvit, I think that's how you say it, you're obviously going to pay a lot more. I think the ranges are around... Between 600 and 800 per month. 600 and 800 per month. But if you're willing to stay a little bit outside the city, which is still very nice, and we were actually right on a, a metro station so we could get into the city really fast, we ended up paying $480 in rent. In one of the most luxurious places that we have ever been definitely the most luxurious place I have ever stayed. And actually, right before we were about to leave this place, I looked it up on Airbnb again, and I saw that they had knocked it down to $380 per month. So if you're willing to stay a little bit outside the city and travel to get on the inside, I think it, it took about 35, 35 or 40 minutes in Metro mm -hmm. to get to the center center where all the action was happening. If you're willing to do that, you can save a lot of money. So the amount of money that we pay for utilities, included, including water and electricity, it was... Was... 
$50. And I would say 90% of that went towards air conditioning. We most of the time use air conditioning just at night time. Right, we were able to save a little bit by leaving the apartment to go work out in the, the common areas. So as long as you're not staying the whole day in your apartment, you can save on air conditioning and utilities. All right, so the next up is our cell phone bill and it was really cheap. When we got to Thailand, I just bought a SIM card right in the airport. And I think the first time you buy it for the first month is the most expensive. But after that, you can just recharge it super cheap. And I think we had 32 gigabytes of data, which is basically unlimited for each person. And it costed less than $5 per person to recharge. So the first time you buy, I can't remember how much it was for the very first month, maybe 20 or 15, 15 or $20 for the first month. But then after that, when you recharge, it's way cheaper and it was like less than $5. Okay, so next on the list, we have budget for personal care items. That includes things like hair stuff, face stuff, toothpaste. Um, if you need to buy some medicine, it might be a little bit more one month, obviously. But overall, we ended up paying for the entire month, personal items, $30, $15 per person. Not so bad, I'd say, even though I think all $30 was for her. <laughs> okay, the last category here is miscellaneous, and that includes shopping in a local market or a mall if you need something. Yeah, pretty much any unexpected expenses, like if you want to buy souvenirs or a gift or something out of the ordinary that you don't normally buy. And we ended up paying for one month. $100 on miscellaneous items. All right, guys, so they give us a grand total of $1,350 for two people. So if you're splitting expenses between two people, we ended up paying $675 per person. But obviously if you're traveling by yourself, it's going to cost more than that because you still have to pay for accommodation by yourself and electricity and everything by yourself. And so for one person, we calculated that your cost would be living a little bit outside of Bangkok. $980. $980, give or take your transportation differences and give or take your entertainment differences. So overall, as you can see, Chiang Mai is probably a cheaper option, but in Chiang Mai, you can't get nearly as much luxury as we got here in Bangkok. Also in Bangkok, there's way more things to do in Chiang Mai. There's enough to keep you busy for ever pretty much. So it's possible in Bangkok to spend a little bit more than you would in Chiang Mai, but get a lot more standard of living. It depends on your style of living. Like this could obviously be two, three, four times as much if you are just spending money all the time. So this is our budget being careful on a budget, but also staying in a pretty nice place. If you have any questions, remember that you can put them in the comments below and we're gonna answer everything. We also put together a super comprehensive Bangkok digital nomad guide. So if you're thinking about living in Bangkok, make sure to check out that post in the description as well. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. See you. Before I leave, I got a question for you guys. It's not cool. It is cool. <laughs> it's not cool. Leave it in the comments below. Should I shave it off or should I keep it? Oh my goodness. I can't believe Hi guys, welcome to another Sawadika. No, wait a see this. Why? It's interesting. Nobody knows what Sawadika is. Everyone who wants to go to Bangkok knows what Sawadika no. means. Guys, welcome. Sawadika. To... <laughs> Hi.